What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Around the Monitor, the weekly gaming news talk show where every point you make in the discussion is a point towards winning. I'm your host, Zach, and how the show works is we talk through the week's news in gaming. Every time somebody makes a good point or a good joke, I give them an actual point, <laughs> and whoever has the highest score at the end of the show wins for that week. Joining me once again, we've got the world's number one Psychonauts 2 fan, David. Where, where, I'm Bobby Kovic, and I took a 50% pay cut, wee, wee. Uh, For those who cannot see, David was wiping his face with literal dollars. Uh, <laughs> we've got world's number one temp worker, Chris. Uh, I'm hopped up for that Johnson & Johnson good juice, and I got a Rubik's Cube. It's Thursday, you know what that means. Surely do. And last but not least, we've got the Ace Attorney Bridge. It's Thursday, you know what that means. We doubly do. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Double Do. Going for the Dimsdale Double Do. <laughs> I'm so lazy, I just stole Chris's bits. That's yeah, fine. Hey, it's fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, I also I also woke up from a nap 20 minutes ago. Nice. That's living the dream, folks. So my That's brain is, so my brain is not a, is not a, is not really running at 100. percent right I'm now. firing on some cylinders. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can watch this show live on twitchtv team every Thursday night at 7:30 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you do so in the Twitch chat, you can use our channel points to vote to determine the scores, either giving or taking away points from people as they make arguments you agree with or jokes you like or just because you don't like them that's also an option but we always start the show with a trivia question to determine the order and folks we finally got it we got an online multiplayer mode for super mario party for the nintendo switch uh long time in the coming my question is how many days has it been since Super Mario Party was released? 500. 25,600 days. Um, 825 days. Okay. Took my fucking number, Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that's the correct answer, folks. Uh, 850 days. The correct answer, 937 days. Oh, all right, then. Jesus uh, Christ. It's, it, was closer to three, it was closer to three years than I thought. Yeah. I, thought it was only, I thought it was only a little over two, so I aimed like I aimed yeah. in the 800s. Smart, smart. Uh, we hit over two. That does mean the correct order will be David followed by Pridge followed by Chris. Topics for this week's show include... Is that a normal Rubik's Cube, or does it have, like, cool, like... Pictures it has, it? uh, it's got all the Disney parks on it. Oh, okay, I'm, okay. We're, we're going to Disney next week, and my mother was like, I'm gonna send you a Rubik's oh. Cube. So it's got, like, Epcot and shit on it. Wow. Mm. Thanks, I like man. how you just completely cut Zach off there. You sure did. <laughs> but no hey. There's no hesitation. I'm more concerned with the Rubik's Cube <laughs> than you running the show. Hey, hey don't worry. Content people tune in for. I'll cut Rubik's this bit from the YouTube version, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's got us there, folks. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Topics for this week include the aforementioned Mario Party getting an online mode. Does that mean anything? <laughs> Over 900 days after the game's release. Sorry, Chris. Super Nintendo World is forced to close down due to a pandemic, so that means you're going to have to talk about it or else you're a coward. Sony is going to spend $180 million to increase first-party developed games, or to, to produce more first-party developed games in the coming years. Apex Legends has added a three-on-three -three battle mode. Uh, what does this mean for the, the, the future of the game? Also, speaking of Respawn, they uh, won an Oscar, the first ever game developer to do so. <laughs> In shit you didn't see coming this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, also, speaking of shit you didn't see coming this week, The Noid, everyone's favorite Domino's mascot, The Noid. You could have said Pizza Hut, I would have believed you. Yep. I, I, <laughs> that's how fucking uh, Coming back <laughs> and is showing up in the Crash Bandicoot Infinite Runner for phones. What? We have to be in the darkest timeline. I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore. Is Tony Hawk in that game? No. 
<laughs> then who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, the Microsoft Store is lowering its cut of PC game sales to match the Epic Game Store. Do, do we think this will put any more pressure on Steam to do the same? No. Uh, surprising <laughs> nobody, documents leaked uh, showing that EA wants to push players towards microtransactions in FIFA. Bobby Kotick has agreed to a salary cut of 50%. Well, kind of. Humble Bundle isn't going to be so much charitable going forward. They put a cap on charitable do donations of 15%. CDPR has revealed that only 30,000 copies of Cyberpunk were refunded, and they ended up making or selling over 13.7 million copies of the game. And finally, Sony has made a publisher page on Steam. Is this a sure sign of more PlayStation games to come to the platform? David, what would you like to talk about for the first topic of the show? There it is, by the way. Uh, I feel like I already talked about it a little bit. It's going to be Bobby Kodak. <laughs> Tell us about Robert Kodak. Activision CEO Bobby Known Rich Person Kodak <laughs> has agreed to have, air quotes heavy, his salary as part of his latest employee contract. Listen, do y'all get to negotiate employee contracts every few years? Is that a fucking <laughs> thing, first of all? You uh, own the company, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Bobby Kotick is going to earn more long-term equity incentive awards, which, to be frank, he does not need. Uh, <laughs> you, you may recall, I believe we talked about it on this show a few weeks ago. Uh, his bonuses came out to like $200 million? something like that yeah, last it was, year it was really high uh and reportedly Kodak agreed to just take basically stock instead of mm -hmm. that much money and i i think it's reportedly like 30 to 40 million in stock so he doesn't need the money his, his <laughs> salary is only and i use only in air quotes because this is stupid rich people shit uh his salary was only 1.75 million dollars now it's going to be eight hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. so Oof. cry me fucking alligator tears on that bobby kodak <laughs> you make hella more than that in bonuses so your salary doesn't really matter um in addition to that the his contract extension which makes it sound like a fucking sports player he's a goddamn ceo <laughs> but his contract extension says he can earn an annual bonus for the next couple of years up to 200% of his new salary. So that's what basically his, what his salary is, what his salary already was. previously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and those incentives are mostly in the form of stock, which because this is just generally how stock works over time, it goes up. Mm hmm. So it's going to be worth more than that by the time he fucking leaves this goddamn company when he's dead and in a box. Damn. Um, like I just why he doesn't need more money he of course he took a pay cut to try and make it look better but guess what Bobby Kodak it's too late you're done it's too late you already fucked up you made too much money you're on the chopping block now when the guillotines <laughs> come out you're going down my dude god damn and like I, I this is all just dumb he doesn't need to make this much money and also his net worth is probably fucking insanely high as this article states when he took control of Activision Blizzard, the company's entire net worth was less than ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. It's now seventy billion. Oh, wow! Which is a total shareholder return of eight thousand one hundred percent in the past twenty years. Damn! I should have invested in Activision twenty years ago. <laughs> it wasn't public. Yeah. I don't well, think it was still, public at no, the time. No, it totally wasn't. But yeah, if you think Bobby Kotick doesn't have a fuck ton of shares from 20 years ago that went from a dollar to $70 or whatever percent, I guess that's yeah. not right with the percent increase, but increased 8,000%, you're wrong. This guy's wealthy as fuck. He doesn't need more money. I don't know why he's still working. Just fucking retire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Rich people he does it for the me. love of the game. Uh <laughs> Holusha gives a point to David for exposing unnecessary rich people nonsense. <laughs> Dan says, King Kotick, the people cannot afford indie games. Let them play AAA. 
<laughs> it's more like let them eat loot boxes. Uh... I said let them play Warzone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Technically free takes all your hard drive space. <laughs> Very true. Bridge, what would you like to talk about for your first topic of the show? All right. Well, I would like to talk about um, surprise mechanics. Hey. Otherwise, speaking of oh, loot boxes, more, a- more actually called <laughs> loot boxes. Take it away. So there was a leaked. Uh, someone leaked an internal document from EA that basically stated. Um, their goal is to drive people to use uh, FIFA's ultimate team game mode, Mm -hmm. which is basically a mode where you get to make your own team, but pretty much everything from, like, the players, the uniforms, the stadium, all that shit is buried under loot boxes. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is that this isn't news. Right. (laughs) Of course EA is trying to drive you towards its loot boxes. We all know this. <laughs> We've all known this for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And the person who leaked it was like, you know, I, I wanted to make this known because they've been getting more, because you know, because there's been more research linking loot boxes to gambling, and they've been getting in trouble in some European countries. I, I, I get. I, I, I don't. I, I appreciate you leaking this, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. We all know that's what EA is trying to do. Mm-hmm. Like, I have like I play a couple. I usually have one or two gotcha games loaded on my phone at all times, and every time I open them up, I get three advertisements telling me to buy the in-game currency. Mm-hmm. The FIFA games are just a sixty-dollar triple-A gotcha game, and <laughs> if we pretend they're anything differently different, we've all lost our minds. <laughs> that's what it is. The FIFA games are just a six are just a yearly release sixty dollar triple A gotcha game. They, they exist to farm loot boxes. This is the most non news piece of news ever. <laughs> the most important thing I learned from this article, and this actually blew my mind. In twenty twenty, EA reported the ultimate team modes represented twenty seven percent. Of its total revenue. Oh, yeah. what? Yeah. The FIFA right. Ultimate Team Mode is one fourth of EA's revenue. One, that, like that, one that's part EA's total of revenue, one not game. Just their FIFA revenue, right? Yes. Yes. EA reported Ultimate Teams 27% of its oh total revenue God. or about $1.5 billion. Wow. Reminder this is the company that gets to make the video games with Star Wars in it. Well, not anymore, well, but yes. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that time is bad. Absolutely unreal. If FIFA just stopped existing, EA's revenue would tank 27%. In, well, no, because that's just the ultimate team mode. I'm sure the games themselves are probably a little more than that its own. You, you could take yeah. probably close to 30% of EA's revenue if FIFA just stopped existing. God damn. Dude. Well, People, why do wild? I know, I know, I'm, I know, and I, I feel like I know that this is not like our, like, you know, our chats by not people doing this, but like, who keeps fucking buying <laughs> FIFA teams every year? A lot of people. Guys, how much does soccer change every year? I only watch like the World Cup of the UEFA, like the championships. How much does soccer change every year? Uh, really quick, Dan gives a point to Pridge saying, I legitimately don't know where that money is coming from. <laughs> I mean, Soccer fans, football fans, I guess. God, I mean, I'm just imagine Save Data presents FIFA. God, let's do it, guys. Let's buy well, FIFA. Chris, Chris, you're making a Pokemon game. How hard do you think it would be to make a soccer game? <laughs> I gotta make a call. Let's, Hello, Pele, let's, you're back. Let's steal the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. <laughs> let's uh, buy FIFA. <laughs> Chris, what would you like to talk about for your first topic of the show? Um... I'm going to delay the Super Nintendo World topic because uh, nobody's going to pick it. So, <laughs> and it, like, not like, look, it's a, it's an obligation at this point. I'll get to it. Let's talk about something actually interesting. And the uh, Apex Legends, yeah, is adding a three on three mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this this comes in the wake of they have a new season of Apex Legends coming out next. I want to say Tuesday. Mm. Um, and uh it's adding a new permanent game mode it's not this isn't like a seasonal event thing uh which is very very similar to how valorant slash csgo works where it's like every round you start off with a amount of money you spend that money in the shop to buy your stuff and then you go play play the round Mm -hmm. um 
and it, it you know it's got it's got its own tweaks because that's what apex does they take the the, the formula of the popular thing and they kind of like fi- nail it down to what it actually absolutely needs to be and then knock it out of the park that's kind mm-hmm. of the whole thing um but uh and like you know that's interesting i'm I'm happy apex is a great game they're gonna add more content that's awesome uh but what i want to talk about is how this sort of affects things more grand scheme so a month or two ago we talked about there was that kind of like weird press conference ea had where one of the ceos uh, or sorry one of the, like the heads of the uh directive part of the company said that they view apex as their flagship shooter mm-hmm. and everyone was like i'm sorry did you forget about battlefield um and uh <laughs> this comes in the wake of last week where uh we finally got our, pre- uh, uh, our press release about what the fuck's going on with battlefield mm-hmm. and the answer is nothing <laughs> uh I mean... basically they have a mobile game coming out sometime either late this year or early next year and they don't have a like that's it ba- battlefield is eventually going to come out yeah uh, so yeah apex is the flagship shooter because it's the only shooter that they have currently except for uh battlefront um but th- so this this to me means that uh i get i guess i mean i can't assume that battlefield has sold poorly at least I, I like people play one as far as i understand and whatever the last one was uh but yeah. i guess i guess just ea has a lot more faith in apex going forward and they have a lot more faith in what it can do for sort of like a competitive flagship shooter i mean it's almost beating fortnite in monthly player base right now mm-hmm. um i mean that's more of an indictment of fortnite's dropping player base than anything else but uh i i think that you know the sort of overall sentiment at ea must be that this is a shooter that we can actually build off of and have a brand based around and i think that like we're we're gonna be going further and further away from apex being the battle royale game to apex being a multiplayer game hub like like a call of duty or a you know any any modern big shooter nowadays but importantly free yeah yeah uh i mean i'm i'm really excited to see how they do with uh you know obviously the the new character that they're bringing in this season is a very direct tie-in to uh titanfall which yes. everybody who you know the the 20 people that played titanfall 2 are very excited hey for hey it. hey hey watch it no, no no it's a great game i'm just <laughs> saying it didn't sell well i think at this point it actually has sold, sold well it's actually okay. at the highest peak it's ever been now okay Compared yeah, it recently, it recently got a huge influx of players. I remember, I remember reading an article about it. I think, it's I think crazy it when you put it somewhere. when you when. Well, no, it went on Steam, and the thing oh, like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. both Apex and Titanfall were doing middling on on Origin, mm-hmm. and then they go on Steam and they blow the fuck up. Yeah. It's almost like people don't want to use Origin because it's a terrible service. It's really bad. Well, I mean, uh, to be fair. If you buy it on Steam, it just opens Origin and you play it there. <laughs> yeah, but people don't, just, people don't people don't know that when they buy it. People yeah. don't open Origin to buy games. It's very true. People open Steam to buy games. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Denny Tornellini takes away a point from Chris because I don't know. I thought it'd be funny. Damn. Um, uh, Joe gets rough out here. immediately comes back says to, to Chris to counteract Denny's attack and Dan also comes back says you know my rules it's fair and balanced so Chris gets two points back <laughs> <laughs> glorious glorious progress <laughs> democracy David, in action everyone. exactly exactly <laughs> this, is how, this is how democracy dies <laughs> <laughs> David what would you like to talk about for your second topic of the show See, I was going to talk about the stream title topic. But there is another topic I actually care deeply about, and that is Humble Bundle. Oh, yeah. This shit's fucked. Uh, Humble Bundle, if you don't know what Humble Bundle is, historically, it's been a website where you can buy bundles of games at discounted prices with most of the proceeds going to charity. The whole point is the publisher or developers put it on Humble Bundle. They take a token amount of money. It's not a lot that they usually got. But the goal was always to promote charities. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like a couple years ago at this point, they were picked up by the parent company of IGN. I think it's Ziff Davis. Yes, Ziff Davis. Yes. Um, And Ziff was like, we're not going to change anything. And it's like, (sighs) well, you picked up what's basically a charity. And you're a for-profit company, so 
bullshit. Uh, Mm -hmm. It only took a couple years for them to switch gears on that. So as of May, I think it's May 1st. Yes. Yes, Late May. Sorry. Very soon. Late May. Either way. Uh, As of late May, they will be capping all charity donations to a maximum of 15%, a default of only 5%. So the entire thing, the entire concept that made Humble Bundle a thing from the very beginning is now being completely destroyed. A 5% token amount will be the default donation Mm -hmm. to these companies, which now you have to like open a drop down box that is not super visible on their website. In fact, it's below the checkout button now uh, using their new, new UI to change your donation, to even give them 15% to the charity. Uh, This is fucking bullshit at this point. Um, Minus bundles being just ridiculously good deals compared to buying them on steam or something. Mm Mm-hmm. The the core concept of Humble Bundle's dead. Um, I, I imagine a lot of places aren't going to be putting a ton of stuff on Humble Bundle anymore with this change. Because uh, the whole point, the whole point is to give money to charities exactly. like Doctors Without Borders and like No Kids. Uh, sorry, uh, I can't remember the Hungry Children one. No Kids Left Behind. It. No. It's not. No, I almost said that. <laughs> and I was like, that's not correct. No, no Child Hungry? No child yeah, hungry. no child hungry. Thank you. Mm. Um, and I think they did some stuff with extra life. So this just fucking sucks in every way, shape and form. Um, it's not surprising since they got picked up by a company. Uh, it just it just fucking sucks. And I'm really mad about it. And I'm probably not going to use Humble Bundle nearly as much as I did before, which is a shame. So, yeah, that's I mean, really it. It just sucks. I'm S- sad. Speaking from, you know, the perspective of we we often buy humble bundles to use those steam codes for like giveaways yeah. with, with the channel. I'm like yeah. that kind of sucks. Uh I mean there's not really like another service that does that. Like that, No, that, like, this is the games. only one that I know of that exists for games yeah. where you can purchase I mean, to be fair, I mean it there's still stuff before. five to 15 percent going to charity that's more than if you buy a game directly off of steam true yeah so it's better than some of the alternatives it just really fucking sucks that they backpedaled this much from what their core mission was do you, do you know what it was what their percentage was before by any chance you could literally do up to like 80 or 100 percent to wow. charity if you wanted to Jeez, it was please. optional like there was essentially a slider before and gotcha. you could change how much you wanted to go to the, the publisher devs. slash developer gotcha. the humble bundle themselves and the charity so usually like personally when i whenever i bought from humble, humble bundle nearly everything went to charity and i left a little bit for uh the website and for mm. the developer damn so sad uh catching up with the chat dan gives a point and says my fundamental question is why did humble accept the buyouts money uh yeah i have a good question for that too when it happened i don't i think it was very confusing Mm -hmm. i I mean i know at the Uh, time a lot of people were freaked out about it especially because it's like well hey you own ign too who does reporting on games what like it's not gonna be a conflict of interest and to (laughs) be fair it hasn't really been a conflict of interest no i I don't Um, think it's i don't think they've been weird with it but yeah i think everyone's fears when this purchase happened are be are finally being becoming reality yeah. it took longer than i think most people thought but it's finally happened mm-hmm. uh, and halucha gives another point to david for ex- again exposing anti-charity bullshit so there we go Pridge, what would you like to talk about for your second topic of the show i will do you a solid and we'll talk about the mario party no uh-huh. <laughs> oh you you got the me bait and switch <laughs> just just like the ending of mario party where you always get fucked anyways i can't believe you've done this uh tell me, tell me tell me tell oh, me about that's mario party. Not, oh, that, oops that's not what you made the, the tag. Stream title, oh, yeah. attention. <laughs> well i don't well i want to talk about that topic but i don't really have much to say on about that besides hopefully we get more playstation games i mean yeah it looks um, like we are <laughs> <laughs> nice so, 900 some days ago, there was a new Mario Party game released. Yeah. Mario Party, that game with the word party in its name. You know, that, that game that's meant to be played with other people. Uh-huh. And, oh, yeah. and, like okay. it's some sort of party game, mm-hmm. you might say. Mm-hmm. 
And in this ever-increasing digital age, a lot of times people like to play party games online. Mm. I mean, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. played during our last celebration stream. We played multiple party games online. Yeah. So it, it seems like a great it seems like a great move to make uh, a party game playable online. Mm-hmm. Which, which makes it really weird that Nintendo decided nine hundred some days after Super Mario Party came out. Just be like, oh, by the way, this two plus year old game, you can play it online now. <laughs> You're welcome. You're well we did it. You're welcome. Give us credit for being great. <laughs> um, Nintendo <clears throat> Nintendo is so correct that it can do whatever it wants and get away with it. That it's able to do just absolutely batshit stuff like this. Like, release a party game and not make it playable online for two plus years later, mm-hmm. even after a year of, even after a year plus of a pandemic when people like were, you know, being legally told or highly encouraged to not see other people. Mm-hmm. Um, it probably, this probably would have been a great update to do a year ago. Literally. On, like, on, yeah. March, on, on April 29th, 2020. I, I still would have questioned why this wasn't there from the beginning, but I've been like, ah, oh, great timing. We're in the middle of a pandemic. You know, people are enjoying ad- what Animal Crossing is allowing them to do. Let's do the same thing for Super Mario Party. But instead, they waited till 2021 when we're actually starting to be able to see people in, per- in person again. Right. More of the story, this probably should have existed from the game's release. And even if it didn't, it should have not taken 900 days. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Nintendo, what the fuck? Why'd you kill Mario? Uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's exactly what you said. We're like, uh, it, uh, the fact that this wasn't like a priority for them last year, especially with the pandemic, like literally Animal Crossing sold so many goddamn Nintendo Switches. There was an actual shortage in that March. To follow that up with having, hey, also pick up Mario Party and an extra controller, because yeah, but knowing Nintendo, they'd be like, oh, you guys have been asking for it. Here it is, multiplayer for one two Switch. <laughs> uh, I mean, hey, I would, <laughs> what well, we've I would, all uh, desired one two Switch. It's it's a pretty okay party game for one party, and then you never play it again. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't buy it because I didn't have faith Listen. that it would be fun. Yeah. Said it before, say it again. Nintendo doesn't know how the internet works. Just no, they have no that. idea. <laughs> God help them if Shiggy ever finds Rule Thirty Four. <laughs> <laughs> he did. It was called Bowsette. Yeah. I was say, there's, there's no way he got to. There's no way the Bowsette craze went and left without him becoming fully aware of its power. A quick tangent. I don't know if any of y'all seen the uh, the Pro ZD sketch of uh, the fucky <laughs> alarm. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. just like doing something and all of a sudden there's an alarm that goes off and one guy's like, wait, what 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 the hell is that? And he's like, ah, that's the fucky alarm, sir. And he's like, what does that mean? He's like, well, the internet took something and made it fucky. Made it. <laughs> uh, Dan Sinarstan gives a point to uh, Pridge. Nintendo hasn't stopped anyone from emulating <laughs> tons of games and using services that allow on play, online play. They're so lost in terms of online c- connectivity. Yeah, couldn't agree more. <laughs> Uh, and Dan is a nerd, which is another Dan, unique Dan in the chat. Says, uh, gives a point. Unique says, Dan. A unique Dan. <laughs> uh, says, N- Nintendo could have sold so many copies of the game if the update was last year. Yeah. yeah. They literally, this, I think, I think yeah. this is this. I, th- I want to say I heard a statistic that's like, this is the seventh best first party Nintendo game on the Switch. It's, it's somewhere pretty high. But just right. imagine if you could have played this game online last year, how much better it would have sold. Bonkers. Just bonkers. Bonk. Just bonkers. bonkers. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck you. Giant Penguin gives a point to Pridge because I bet he could beat us all in Mario Party mini games. Oh. Um, okay. No, I would not necessarily agree with that. I, I did. I think. I think. Who who got the mini game crowd in Pummel Party? Either uh, Chris or Jason. Yeah, I think it was, it was Jason. Chris or Jason, yeah. Yeah, it was either Chris or Jason. Jason's yeah. Jason's good at mini games and yes. small bullshit in general. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm good. I'm good at Mario Party mini games, but I think everyone in this chat is at least decently good at them. Yeah. 
Joe also gives a point to David because they are totally going to crush that Counter Strike Go Apex Legends mode. <laughs> I am very down to stream that. By by the way, <laughs> we'll do it. When we're playing a lot of our uh, uh, next week, I'm out of town. We'll do the week after. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, That's the week I'm off. <laughs> I'll be back on Saturday. <laughs> well, you're here now, uh, Chris. What would you like to talk about for the final topic of the show? Uh, if we didn't know. Well, folks, sometimes Chris makes a promise in January to talk about Super Nintendo World every time it shows up on the show because he thinks it'll be funny. And then it happens again and again and again. And I commit to this bit because I'm a damned fool. I could have just let it die and move on. But here we are. (laughs) First, I also I want to clarify the last time that we had this thing on. It was roughly a month ago. And I said, next time we have this on, it's going to be me talking about how it's closed. Fast forward to now. (laughs) Yeah, it's fucking closed, y'all. Yeah. Surprising Um, nobody. Super Nintendo World for, forced to close as uh, the entire Osaka region uh, prefecture or whatever of Japan is in lockdown. Um, <clears throat> look, I could talk about how this is stupid and how this is Super Nintendo World's fault. It is partially their fault. They were he- heavily advertising, please come here, dear God, we need money. Mm-hmm. But but you know what? Let's break it down because the yen is in the goddamn toilet, folks. That's right. <laughs> it's time for the economy um, because Japan... You might have heard of this this country, Japan. Uh, they were supposed to host this little thing called the Olympics. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And when when it, when a country has to host the Olympics, they have to build structures. They have to build large like amphitheaters and stadiums and coliseums and like housing and like other infrastructure things and restaurants and buildings. And that costs a lot of goddamn money. Sure do. And then when, just say magically, the Olympics gets canceled. And you're out of all that money and nobody wants to travel and nobody wants to go to Japan, an expensive country to travel to in general. Uh, you start being like, hey, dear God, please, please, please come here. We'll give you travel incentives. We opened the, the Mario place. Come look at the Mario's. God, the Mario well, place. <laughs> come, come race with your with your with our many Yoshis. Um, and then you get a you get a decent influx of people coming in in the middle of a global pandemic. And then shocker to literally no one. People start getting sick because they're spreading COVID all over the Yoshi handlebars and the Mario Kart seats. <laughs> Captain Toad up. died. Captain, Captain Toad is <laughs> hospitalized. Toadette is beside herself. <laughs> Nintendo executed Mario. Captain Toad's <laughs> sick. Mario's <laughs> dead. It's just chaos. In the Mushroom Kingdom. The, per- the, the point is, I don't care how much money Japan lost. Don't go to a <laughs> fucking uh, theme park in the middle of a pandemic. Anyway, Goofy was on the Rubik's Cube the whole time. It was a setup. <laughs> okay, that was pretty good. Would have been better if you could have solved it in time. But pretty I good. missed two spaces. But pretty good. But pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Are you kidding me? That was the best setup ever. That was the best goofy joke I think we've had on yeah, the show, I, well, period. It's not a high bar, pro- but yes. I got a prop for this. You did, you did. Well, I mean, your mom did. Yeah. Yes, uh, without <laughs> knowing. That's just how my life works nowadays. Incre- I mean, wait, wait, wait. Real talk. You, you are going to, to, to Disney next week? Yes. Uh, good Lord, <laughs> I cannot wait to see... Um. And this is this is not a joke. My mother bought us like a three pack of face masks like that are Disney themed. Guess which one I'm wearing? Oh, I mean, the it's Kermit goofy. one. <laughs> it's goofy. I will take photos with every Kermit and Goofy I see. And that is a that is a crisp promise right there. folks. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. Uh, <laughs> also, I do appreciate, also, I love- <laughs> appreciate the irony of you saying don't go to this theme park. That's my topic. Also, next week, I'm going to Disney. That's, yes, that was the joke. Thank you. OK, OK, that's also the joke. I'll give I'll give you I'll give you that one. Uh, Dan gives a point and says Japan's number one cultural export is an Italian. That's yeah. he's not an Italian. Oh my god, we're not, doing this. we're not doing this again. Uh, <laughs> Gay Space Fox gives a point to rip to the Yoshi handlebars. <laughs> well, they're not living, be- <laughs> they're just I, I can ride my Yoshi with no handlebars. God, no handlebars. Damn Yoshi it, with no handlebars. that's really with no good. Handlebars. That's really good. <laughs> uh, so Billy gives a point to Chris saying that was good. <laughs> Uh, and Halaluchi gives a point to Chris for the prop. For for the jokes, and because you will be out next week, I am going to give you an extra point. 
which hey. does in fact put Chris in the lead. So David hey. and Pridge, it's time to go home and become family men because this week's winner is Chris. I feel robbed. Yeah, you you re- the, you had the crowd the whole time. <laughs> uh, <it> was- <laughs> Oh, here we go. It was, it was the goofy bit. Dan, Dan is a nerd. Takes away from a point from Chris for going to a theme park after talking about not going to a theme park. No, it's too late. We declared a winner. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can't have another tie. We have to end the show at some point. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Chris, are you ready for your minute to win it? Yeah, I'll just plug some shit. Okay. Well, you normally do that after the show, but sure, do it now. I, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go more in depth okay. because, folks, I'm here to talk about our Patreon. Because uh, our Patreon offers you many things, mostly the ability to like influence, hey, what video essay are we working on next? Or like, what stream should we do here, or there, here, there, whatever the fuck. But now, to the glory of my bad idea, um, we are doing a hashtag secret project, which I think is now visible to folks in the Discord, even if you're not a, a Patreon member. But we're making a Pokemon game, folks. Pokemon data, that's right. Uh, Jason and I have been working on it, and David's going to get involved now that we figured out how to make all that happen. Um, and if you would like to just be in a Pokemon game full of our jokes, if you'd like to ambush Zach and make his life miserable and kill him during a Nuzlocke, you can do that by joining our Patreon, <laughs> coming into the Discord, and saying, hey, Chris, I want this Pokemon, I want to be in this location, and I want to fuck Zach over. And I'll be like, you got it, dude, or you just want to be an NPC in a building somewhere? You want to sell Pokeballs? You want to sell drugs? Whatever you want, we will make it happen. Because uh, this, Because, look... Game Freak can't stop me. Zach can't stop me. There's no one left to stop me. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do whatever I like. I'm gonna, I'll put Ace Attorney monsters in it. I'll put Digimon in it. I don't care. <laughs> Good lord. Support us on Patreon. May God help us all. Uh, Watch the Pokemon Nuzlocke. <laughs> also, yeah, we we do have a uh, uh, the first episode of our Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke, which again is not the special custom game. It is just normal Pokemon Emerald Nuzlocke, but. Spoiler alert, it's going to take a little bit to make an entirely new Pokemon game. So in the meantime, enjoy this content. <laughs> it's going to take a while, folks. It's yeah. going to take a while. Joe, uh, Joe, Joe says, support small creators. There's nothing more small than three of us making a Pokemon game. That's for <laughs> damn sure. <laughs> uh, Dan, Dan also shouts out Ligma the Lotad, which is uh, a character, a, a party member that Dan himself got to name while watching the stream. So do that. We, we'll be live uh, this Saturday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> Uh, also, Makumichi, uh, the absolute legend, some some might say the goat, who uh, was extremely generous this <laughs> yesterday, said, wait, but can't we do the Ace Attorney thing where you do a takesy backsy on your verdict? The show, we're, we're, in the, we're in the post show at this point. I'm sorry. We can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, too late now. We've already done the minute to win. We can't edit that. Exactly. Uh, other things to shout out this week. Uh, so I do... I do have a video essay coming out. Uh, I'm saying Sunday at the latest. It could be Saturday, depending on how much I get done tomorrow, because I don't have anything to do, which is great. Um, which also, uh, fun fact, does feature a thumbnail uh, made custom by uh, one Sibylla Scribbles, who is in our chat and our Discord right now. So uh, It's dope. I've seen yeah. it with my yeah. own yeah. eyes. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, it's, it's a really cool video. Um, David, do you have anything you'd like to plug? Um, uh, I mean, generally, just next week we got a ton of stuff coming. So Wednesday, Ace Attorney, four thirty Pacific, seven thirty Eastern. Thursday, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, this show, seven thirty Eastern, and then next Friday, Save Datacast at seven thirty Eastern. So look forward to that. Uh oh, actually, also important thing to plug uh, with the Ace Attorney streams uh, because we made a stupid challenge to our audience that they would not hit a certain donation level. Uh, that we would do the stream from. A body of water and then we hit that donation incentive so tune in wednesday when we somehow do this from a body of water i can't guarantee we'll do the whole stream in it because the audio and video quality will be garbage but we'll do some of it well we have three people streaming from their respective bathtubs probably folks possibly yeah that's that's, that's <laughs> that, almost certainly that, what's gonna happen it technically qualifies as a body of water yeah <laughs> it's true folks. welcome to the data tub um <laughs> while, penguin while, with hashtag rise from the bathtub <laughs> come about the water 
Um, <laughs> then we'll truly be swimming. <laughs> Sit in your kitchen sink. Oh, while we're plugging streams and also Halucha asks who's going to cover for me on Pokemon next week. Uh, Pokemon is next week is now Pokemon Saturday. Uh, we're doing a bonus stream on Saturday because I'm out of town next week. So tune in at 7.30 for uh, Jason, Zach, and I doing more of the Pokemon Nuzlocke. Uh, we're going to make some more progress this time because we don't have a demo to play afterwards. And oh boy, something is almost certainly going to die. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Who will be the first casualty of this of the Save Data Nuzlocke? Will it be Zach? Find out. Yeah, Zach the uh, <laughs> the Wingle, probably. Zach the Wingle or the Puchiana whose name I've forgotten. Uh Barbar or Brabra. Oh Brabra, Bra-bra. yeah. Bra-bra. <laughs> the surf and Puchiana, of course. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's good stuff. Between between Zach's playing it, Chris's brand of Chris humor, and Jason knowing more about Pokemon than any human should, it's a good time. Uh, and you know what? Halucha also points out uh, they still have two names yes, owed to yes, them. So yes, the next Halucha two names has, will be named Halucha. by Halucha. Halucha has names in the bank. <laughs> uh, and just because the chat won't get over it, uh, I'm going to lower Chris's points by two oh, because fine. they took him away, but he still won. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That's, that dems the brakes. Dems the brakes. <laughs> brown, brown. I have in, 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 that, in the book we keep that has all the winners, there's an asterisk next to this one. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have that right over here. <laughs> the, the tome. This is right here. <laughs> uh, but that the is going to do it. The, the save data for more. <laughs> well, actually, game design workshop. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, nobody, no, nobody's reading. Uh, but that is going to do it for another episode of Around the Monitor. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. And until next time. This has been Around the Monitor.